Hey fam. All right. Today we have a mega, mega, mega unboxing from Equigenera. It's actually a combination of about three orders that I did prior to, you know, in, in the November, December timeframe. And they just, uh, just arrived today. Uh, that being said, we're going to go through the entire process, uh, from the, the from the unboxing to, uh, my post treatment process to, um, to pond them up. So sit back, relax, and let's make it do what it do. All right, so we got another, well, uh, it's a big one. It's a nice big unboxing. I've been waiting all day to, uh, for this package. Usually UPS, I'm, I'm like, like the first one out the gate. You know, they'll drop it off. Like if it's supposed to be between 10 and 12, it'll, they'll get, it'll get here before, um, get here by 9.30, 9.45, maybe 10.30. But today was a little different. So, I, but I finally got it. Uh, this is my haul from Equigenera. And I, it's actually a combination of about three different purchases that I did over the, over the, over the fall. And then this is their first delivery date uh, in 2023. So it's now January the 13th, Friday. So <laughs> there you go. That's why, that's probably why things are different today. And, um, yeah, we're going to do an unboxing. All right. I can't remember exactly what I got guys, to be quite honest, you know, it's been a while and I didn't, uh, and when I looked at the, uh, when I looked at, when I actually saw that it was coming, I didn't, I decided not to look at the, uh, look at the packing slip because I wanted to be a little surprised. So we have, yep, we have 11, 11, uh, the, the 11 that we're going to go through. So, uh, what we're going to do to do, what we're going to do this time this, for this video, I'm going to, we're going to do, go ahead and do the unboxing. And then I'm going to go through the process and we'll actually show you the entire process of what I do. So we're going to do the unboxing. Then I'm going to show you soaking some of these plants, how I get them. Uh, what uh, what I use for that, and then uh, we're going to uh, let them soak or sit in a pot for about 24 hours, which is what uh, Equigenera recommends. Some people, once they get their plants, they will immediately uh, plant them. Others will only do it for a couple hours. Other people do it for three or four days to a week. Um, so everybody has their own style. You just have to figure out what works for you. All right. So that being said. Now we're going to unbox. All right. All right. So this first one, um, like first one again, a couple of these were, um, ones I got online through sales and other, um, some of them are ones that, uh, that I got through an auction. I believe it was, uh, yeah, I got through an auction. So I, I, uh, if I remember which one it is, I'll definitely let you know. Uh, either uh, by telling you, or I'll look at it, look at, look back at my receipt and see uh, and see which one is which, and put it down here somewhere. All right, so I did find my scissors this time, guys. You know, I had enough time to uh, look for this one. It's a big one. <laughs> look at it, and it's actually one that I already have but I saw it on sale and I was like, you know what? You know, I don't really, I, I, I've gotten out of the habit of doing duplicates. Cause I mean, by the time, if you raise one right, you can basically have a bunch of, uh, you can basically get a bunch of seedlings or propagations or whatever, and you'll have multiple ones eventually anyway. But with this one, I just couldn't resist. All right, so this is my first one, I don't even, you know, let me put this down here and that way I can lay them over here. All right. So this one, I actually ordered this one online and I'm just like, oh my God, this is huge. <laughs> it is the Del Cinque. I know you guys remember that from, the, uh, from one of my favorites. So now they, I guess they just said, you know, we're going to send you the mama. This one, I don't even, okay. This is nice. Okay. Ha! I'm excited. All right. I, uh, I did put a, just so you guys know, I also, when I know, realized that it was coming in January and I was kind of concerned about the weather 
let me make sure, 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 sure to see you guys again. I'm oh, sorry I didn't do it that way, but you'll see it again once it's uh, once it's kind of gotten acclimated and, and, and is doing its thing. But this is beautiful. This is a new leaf that's coming out right here. So it hasn't fully come out yet. And wow, and let's I said I was gonna do everything. So let's look at the roots real quick. Hold on. It's dinner time here. So if you hear my uh my cat in the background, she's probably like, look, dang that it. <laughs> you you need to <laughs> fill up this bowl. So I'm gonna do it as soon as I get finished this. Baby girl. All right. And for those who are wondering, I have a, uh, I have a uh, British short hair. Her name is Simone, after Nina Simone, and she is two years old. Oh wow, yeah, these are nice. Look at these leaves. I mean, look at these roots. Yeah, the, the root leaves. Look at these roots, man. This is a really, this is way more than I was expecting. Because if you see my first, they'll sing you the first video it wasn't this big <laughs> at all so yay for me all right so we'll put her down we're gonna put this good sphagnum off to the side because you know we're gonna use this again at some point right all right let me uh uh figure out where to put it um, i'll put it right here all right so that is the philodendron del Sol. All right. If you don't realize, if you don't know, this is probably going to be a long video. So uh, either, you know, get yourself a, a coffee or cocktail or what have you and just sit back and chill. All right. So this next one. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. This one is, uh, I ordered this one. Uh, this is the, okay, I gotta tell y'all this after the fact, and I actually probably need to make sure I take this, uh, take this, uh, little label. I'm always afraid of not, when I, if I don't have the label next to it before I really remember, remember what, what each one looks like, I'll forget what they are. Most of the time I don't, but, you know, it's still one of those things. So what I'm going to do is with this one, I probably want you to, well, I don't want to show the roots because I want to see the roots myself. Um, yeah, I want to see the roots myself. So this one is the Serenoi, Serenoi Agapornis, Anthurium Serenoi Agapornis. So it's a velvety, velvety Anthurium. I'm a glutton for punishment because these bad boys. Some, it's funny because some of them, some of my velvets, no problem. They're just like whatever. They're going with the flow. Other ones, others, are like dramatic. <laughs> they, they, you know, especially like my my war crimes, war crimes. I mean, they're uh, I have one out of like three or four that I have that are that's doing well. The rest of them. It's Struggle City right now, and I'm, it's, I'm just trying to make sure that they survive on some level, and hopefully it will give uh, produce another leaf that'll be in my environment, so that they can they can live in my environment. That's the bottom line. So that's it. Um, give me a second. All right. So this for the. Uh, here the roots that you guys just see. Really nice. And there's a, oh, this is the uh, Serenoi Agapornis. All right. Let me chart her. There she goes. That's number two. Number three. <laughs> in our plant hall palooza. Okay, so this is one that I actually I ordered. I mean, I ordered. I actually got this as a uh, 
as a uh, in the auction in one of the auctions and this is one that uh, actually uh one of the subscribers matt apparently he was he would really have bid it for it too but they saw my bid before they saw his so i got it I like the packaging i'm glad that i ordered, I ordered a key pack with this uh because like i said it was it was it's, the weather's starting to turn a little bit. It's still not as cold as in certain certain cities, but it was definitely uh, it's definitely colder at night. Uh, and coming from Florida, I'm pretty sure that there was a shift. And even now, I can feel in feeling the plant. They feel a little cool. So I, I got when I got it, they got here at top of it. I think it's about like a little bit after five. Well, it's about yeah, it's close to six now. And so I ran outside. So I was kind of like, you know, remember, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen this uh, animated feature. I actually like a couple of things. I like uh, a, a bunch of, I like movies, period. But uh, uh, one of my one of my favorite genres is uh, animated features. So I like, uh, I don't know if you guys ever saw that movie Up. Uh, but the dog, Doug, you know, every time he, uh, every time he saw a squirrel, he was like, squirrel. squirrel. That's kind of how it was when I heard and I was hearing uh, cars drive by and, and like and the like because I was like, man, can you come, up, please, <laughs> please come. I was like, but you know, it's, good things come to those who wait, right? Uh, okay. So I'm getting most of this out. I want to also make these are gonna be some. Black. I don't know if this is gonna fit in my sink. <laughs> I was I was not I was I was not uh, anticipating the sizes that I'm getting right now because you know you know you never know sometimes they're big sometimes they're small this one is called the Anthurium Hybrido I'm going to have to look this up because when they when they said it online and in my in my uh, in my paperwork they and I'll, I'll, I'm going to look it up between now and when you guys see me uh, go ahead and pop this up so this will be a few minutes for you but it'll be a day or two for me uh, but when I when I or when I bid it on it, they they call it the Anthurium Proof, and I I forgot exactly what I heard, but I didn't hear Proof. So when I saw the uh, invoice, I was like, "What is a Proof?" And it was there was nothing online about it. But apparently, based off of uh, my conversations with Equigenera, this is one of their unclassified hybrids, um, and this is it the Anthurium Brew. Look at this. This is really nice. It kind of reminds me of a, almost like a Dissipants or something in that family. Um, really nice. And it was a very, very mature. As I said, guys, if you ever get a chance, if you haven't done it already, definitely check out, I mean, even if you just are like a fly on the wall, uh, check out some of their, uh, their uh, auctions. Right now, they used to be on uh, Wednesdays and Saturdays, but now they moved them to Wednesdays and Fridays. So definitely something to see. And the one good thing about the, you know, the prices, you know, it's not like you can uh, uh, like uh, haggle on the prices, but um, you want to typically get a bigger, bigger specimen, uh, typically. So it's value for the dollar. And then two, you, what you see is what you get. So if you if you're bidding on X Y Z, you you get X Y Z, and they will also um, they also you know if you let ask them they'll also let you do a screenshot so that you can uh, so you can remember what you what you paid for by the time you got it really. <laughs> but um, so that was the uh, Ethereum proof. So I do. Ah, oh, got my stuff clean up. Getting this sphagnum moss all over me. All right. So that is that one. That's what one, two, three. I feel like it's Christmas on my birthday. <laughs> All right. Um, so next. These are some pretty big festivals, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm thoroughly uh I'm excited. I'm happy about this. This is this this gives me that warm fuzzy. I was like, you know, because Again, sometimes maybe it's because it's winter and they, you know, not that I don't know, but bottom line, it's like I so far so good. These are 
the ones that I've ordered, you know, the ones that I ordered sight unseen, I'm impressed with the size, I'm impressed with the, uh, the look. All right, so this one is the Anthurium. I said it right this time, because last time I introduced this, <laughs> I, I called it a philodendron. I think I even wrote it down as a philodendron. And I was like, when it came, went up, I was just like, you know what, I'll just, I'll just, you, know, you guys brought it to my attention, which was awesome. And I just said, you know what, I'm just gonna say it in the comments that I made a mistake. Please forgive me and we'll just move on from the future. But this one is the Luthery. So this is the Anthurium Luthery. Uh, as you guys probably saw, I, I recently got the Anthurium Lu3 CF from uh, Equigenera USA out of Florida. And as you can see, it's definitely a different style. I'm still try trying to figure out why, why, they're, um, why they would be considered uh, in the same genus, or same, I'm sorry, not just same genus, but the same family. Um, mainly because they do look different. I mean, you know, the outside of the strappy leaf thing, they look different. So, you know, one is definitely a lot thicker than the other one, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Um, so I'm going to show you guys the roots. All right, um, so this is the Lutheran. And this is, here you go, the roots. It has one main root. So we're just gonna work this out. So hopefully this time around, I will not kill it. Um, I am going to do it differently this time. I'm gonna put this definitely in a more moisture retentive mix uh, than I had before. And um, you know, just you live and you learn. But this is the Luthery, so I'm excited to see how this bad boy grows. It looks like this, it looks like it has a, looks like this is another, uh, yeah, it's another leaf that's popping up. So cool. This is actually, and this one is bigger than the one I had before too. I'm, I'm kind of like, wait a minute. <laughs> y'all, you mean to tell me y'all could have been sending me this, these sizes all this time? Man. All right. All right, so that's the roof. Okay. I had coffee late this afternoon, guys. So if I'm a little camped up, this is, that's probably the reason why. So this one is, okay, all right. <laughs> I was looking at the wrong sign, what, what is that? It's like, I've never heard of that point. So this is kind of like the cousin of the, uh, or what I would consider the cousin of the uh, Luthery. I mean, in terms of looks, I mean, it looks a lot more like the Luthery than, <laughs> than the, uh, than the Luthery, yeah. Let be quite honest, but anyway, uh, let me. So, if you guys know the, the reason why they call the Luthery CF, why they classify it as a Luthery, please, you know, comment in the com. Uh, please share in the comments. Let me know because I'm I'm curious. I'm just like, okay, they. I mean, you know, it looks like it means probably looks as it looks more close, close related to a Patricia, Patricia, although it's a Ethereum than uh than uh than a than the Luthery, but you know it is what it is but yeah i definitely like to know if you guys know let me know so this one and it's time to jack up some names it is the anthurium fried dish i'm gonna you know I'm, you know as you guys you guys know in my videos i put all the names down here because this in case one you want to, you need to write it down. I want to take a uh, a screenshot or whatever. Uh, but and, but and also the fact that you may not understand what me jacking it up so much. You you may not understand what I'm saying when I say it. Uh, but anyway, this is the Ethereum Friedrich Shali Friedrich Shali Friedrich Shali Friedrich. Friedrich Stolly, Friedrich Stolly, the Anthurium Friedrich Stolly. So this is the Anthurium Friedrich Stolly. This year, I mean, it's funny because this year I started out not really care, not this year, 
22. In 22, I started um, not really liking uh, strappy and thin. I was just like, I don't get them. They're, they're, uh, strappy leaf what uh everywhere period uh not just uh, then, then, but for whatever reason like by the time fall hit babies i i, I saw the songs to me i read I heard the songs too many times of other people praising them or i just uh, just saw it in a new light you know uh i started liking them i started liking the feel of them uh, i have a couple of uh, these i'm going to be well you probably guys by the time you guys see this you would have seen my wish list video, or at least my wish list video will be out, hopefully. And uh, yeah, it's, there's, a, there's a couple of those, like the when lingering, and then when lingering, I want that. I definitely want that. I've seen it in a couple of places. I'm probably just gonna have to get a seedling, <laughs> which is good. Like I said, I, you know, I, don't, I said, you know, I talk about seedlings because of the fact they're cheaper or whatever. But the reality is, is that there's so there's a a value, and, and let me know if you guys feel the same way. I think that there's something amazing about watching a plant or anything, you know, grow from a seedling and into your care, and that you move it. It becomes moves from being a seedling to to being, you know, this. Awesome, awesome um, specimen, whatever that specimen is. So, what is this one? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, this is actually a replacement <laughs> because the first one went up yonder, <laughs> and it went up yonder quick. So, we'll see how long. What the, how this? What happens with this one? Uh, I'm definitely gonna check, open up the the roots because it is important <laughs> for me to see what I'm working with you know we're going but we're just going to put up some positive energy about this one and hope that everything goes well all right I want you to give it up I don't know what I mean wow man these roots are, it's so crazy how different I mean every every genus every species, whatever, have, they, they have different their own characteristics, but it's so funny how with philodendrons, their uh, leaves are so, I mean, their roots are so small. This is the philodendron squamacall blushing. Look at this beauty. Oh my God, this is nice. Again, <laughs> I don't know, they're just trying to I don't know whether they're making up stuff or maybe because they're not doing the whole frequent freaking buyer thing. But look at this. This is amazing. <laughs> it looks so beautiful. I was like, you know, I typically, you know, I haven't bought, I've, I've done more in this winter than I have in any other time. But I've been, because I've been going to town. That's not happening. That's not, not as much. It's going to be a lot more curated and selective uh, purchases this year. But like I said, last year was a building year, so that's the reason why. But this is the Squamacall blushing. And I'm praying to the plant gods. <laughs> I'm praying to the plant gods that she lives. I, I, I need for her to survive. Because <laughs> this is ridiculous. Look how, look how nice she is. And I'm going to do that. <laughs> I'm going to do everything I can to make you stay. All right. All right, All right guys. All right. So this is the Squamacall blushing. Right, uh, and then I don't even know what I, I, you know. I stopped counting. Let's see how many do we have left. Looks like we got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, wow, I've been talking. All right, so this, my friends, is so we have five, seven, number seven. This is number seven. All right. All right. You know, by the way, guys, yeah, I haven't said it before. I haven't said it recently. I definitely appreciate you guys, um, you know, supporting the channel. Man. It's, it's, it's been, an honor, it's been an honor just kind of being able to be a part of the community and, and you guys welcoming me into this space. Um, you know, I don't really have a lot of you know it's great to be able to connect with people that are that have the same passion as i do when it comes to plant care and and, and plant collecting and all that um you know i, I see it. 
but a lot, unfortunately, it is what it is. I mean, everybody has their own, own uh, interest, but most of my friends are not plant people. And uh, most of my family, outside of my mom, but I mean, she's even, she's more of a, she's, you know, she, she's a, She's not, but she doesn't go deep like I do. I say it like that, but that's but that's that's the woman who who sparked the light in my uh, in my interest in plants. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh yeah, this is nice. What is this? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and I've been getting a whole bunch of crosses with this. This is the end theory. And you know what? Y'all gonna start seeing a lot more. <laughs> this is, you know, I mean, I, I'm. I'm this year, I'm going to be doing a lot more. Um, um, I want to I kind of delve into other, other. I'm not going to be doing a lot of uh, purchases. At least that's not the plan. Um, there are some ones that I want to want to replace that just didn't make it for whatever reason. Um, then there's also, uh, but then there's some species, species that I want to revisit. There's some genuses that I've never never had before that I want to explore, like the Hoyas. From the Hoya. So, if you guys got comment recommendations for a, a newbie on the Hoya scene, please, again, put them in the comments. Let me know. Uh, and I want to go back. I want to get back into. I want to try to go. I mean, I had them for a minute. Uh, got a couple of the um, polka dot begonias from from um, Lowe's when they came when they were when they were stocking them, and then I had a couple of uh, got a couple from Steve's Leaves was not successful, you know, for various reasons. And so I, I, I put them down, put them to the side. So I want to, I want to, I'm going to revisit that. So this one is the Ethereum Crystallinum Bessier app. Look at this beauty. Oh my God. Oh my goodness. All right. <laughs> so this is, and she has a new leaf coming in. I'm, I'm going Oh man, I hope she can you guys see that? Go ahead and zoom in. Yeah. She is beautiful. Oh my god, look at that. Oh. <laughs> I am loving this haul, man. This is just this is this is nice. I'm 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 ex I'm excited about that. And I got all this free bag of moss because I as you guys if you guys have saw my uh my uh we pop with me vi uh, video. You'll know. I need. I need to. I need to make some polls <laughs> for real bad. So that's gonna be something that's gonna be coming up too. Um, I do it a couple of different ways, just depending on what I, my needs are. Uh, but yeah, uh, yeah. I need. I need. So <laughs> these this little spag of moss would definitely help me out long term. <laughs> All right. So this one is one of the ones I got from the auction. I want to say it was a trilogy. I think I'm pretty sure this one was, I got this one as a pack with the other other one, uh, some of the other Ethereum with the Serenoid. Um, I want to say they were the same one. I have to look at the uh, label to see. All right, so this one, let me, this one is the Serenoid Velvet. Uh, so I got this one is supposed to be a darker, I believe it's a darker green, like the other one is more of a lighter green. Look at these roots. Good Lord. All right. Um, look at these roots, man. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Look at this. I have confidence that this will survive as long as I give it the, you know, make sure it's humidity and all that other stuff. So we'll, um, They'll put these in. Alright, so this is this is it. Um this is the Serenoid Velvet. Okay. So we can put this to the side. I was just gonna put this in here for right now. Because it's stacking up on the side. Alright. Next. Oh, what's that? Alright. Next. Okay, you know what? All right. Uh, hey, okay, well, I guess. Is the same thing? Okay. I don't know if I, I, uh, I don't think I had two of them. 
Is this the Sarah Noy Velvet too? <laughs> so maybe it's a smaller one. I think they, I have to look and see if they were in the same lot. Maybe I got, I told you, I um, when I got, after I got them, I was like, I had a general idea of what I got. I don't think some of them actually stood out, but generally speaking, I was just like, okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, I think, uh, who was that? Um, Jasmine alone. She she uh, she mentioned in one of her videos. I don't know if she does this all the time, but she just kind of forgets about what she what she uh, ordered, and so it can kind of be a little bit of a surprise. So I was like, yeah. And if you don't if you don't uh, if you don't have, if you're not subscribed to her, definitely check her out too. And also check out if you I'm pretty sure most, a lot of you guys probably already uh, know Airway Distant. But if you if you don't, definitely check them out too. And Dave, thank you for the shout out in your last video. I much appreciated. I was humbled and surprised. I was surprised and humbled. Um, you know, definitely look forward to uh, doing some collabs in the future. All right. So this is. I'm kind of like, y'all know what these roots look like. This is they, uh, they put they put one of the roots in a knot, which kind of gives me a little pause, but. I mean, in other words, the little knot here, it, it was a root that was in it, but you know, sacrifices had to be made to open up this package. <clears throat> uh, again, another beautiful root system. This is ridiculous, it's nice. So when you do, um, for those who are gonna, uh, who, have, who have never imported before or what have, what have you, and it's the same thing when you when you when you when you, when you buy a plant locally. You definitely want to check the roots, but when you're importing, there's a high, there's not saying it's going to happen all the time, but there's a pop probability that uh, some of the roots are dead or damaged or what have you. So you do want to look at them. You know, obviously it's very easy to tell with uh, with the anthuriums. I'm, I'm sorry, I forgot to show you what it looked like. So this. Yeah, I like that when I thought the Cyrano, I was like, okay, this kind of looks like the, uh, kind of looks like the work around them a little bit, but not, uh, hopefully it's not as sensitive, but, uh, because the ones I have, man, whoo, they're not looking good. There's one, the baby <laughs> right now is fine. And I actually do have her more and more, I have all of them in a controlled environment, she's, but she's doing okay. The rest of them, mm. Lord, Lord, Lord. All right, so, but Bob, I'm sorry, back to what I was saying uh, with roots. You want to just make, just like with anything, you want to kind of test them, make sure that they're firm, whatever color they, they're supposed to be, from, be it a, an anthurium root or a philodendron root, which usually have a tendency to be a little bit more brown, but have you just make sure that they, they're, uh, they don't look black. <laughs> Definitely, that's a sign. Or like in this one, probably brown would be more of a sign. And that they, uh, they look good. They go when they go through the uh, import process. They have to strip out all the dirt and make sure that it's. Uh, and so that process, I'm not sure if it's chemical or not. I'll look it up and I'll explain it to you in an import video. But that process typically uh, uh, stresses out the stresses out the plant and the roots, and that's one of the reasons why you have to acclimate it and all that and take it through this process. But yeah, um, but that being said, you know, that's when you can lose some, some roots and then of course some just break off or whatever. But that being said, you know, check the roots, make sure that they're healthy, check the leaves. Sometimes they may be, um, they may be wilting. Some of you know, there's a, there's a high probability that some of them will die. Uh, this is actually a really good looking, uh, I, I'm surprised. Because, I mean, I've, you know, and again, it's part of the process. You know, you're going to get some that are going, you know, you're going to get some or all of your leaves are going to die off at some point. Um, if you're doing that process while they're acclimating into your environment and or what have you. Usually, and what Equigenera recommends is that when you, when you bring them into your home, you do the 24 hour, uh, put them in water for 24 hours. Uh, and then you, you know, then you pot them up and you make sure you keep them in a high humidity environment for, uh, for a couple of weeks to just kind of keep them, uh, just get them acclimated. And I guess you can always either keep them in the tent, in, in your tent or, uh, 
or move them out or slowly move them out into your into a normal environment to lower humidity you know or you can just take it to the head and pot them up and put them put them up put them on the table and you know it's your plant it's your life you can do what you want to do all right so this is the serenoid velvet another one so i got two that's cool i got three actually i mean you know the other serenoid uh, Okay, all right, so this one is, this was, man, this is actually about the size I thought it was gonna be. I, you know, I, <laughs> this was a popular one, so I know they ain't giving out uh, upside, ups, upsides of these just on the regular, so I'm not, I'm not surprised that it's, it's, uh, I got a medium sized one, so it's gonna be a medium sized look. But I got one, and I do love it. And so I'm gonna, I decided to get another one. But she's gonna have a little sister, our twins, at some point when they get older. Uh, all right. Yeah, she's definitely a baby, but. She's, uh, she looks very nice. I mean, nice size, too, regardless. I tell you this, it's a bigger size than what I've seen domestically. Because, I mean, it's like, like $800. You're like, for what? <laughs> this one is the Palette de Florum. If you guys, if you guys didn't recognize it immediately yet, as I opened up the bag, this is the Palette de Florum. Really nice. Really, really, really nice. And... She is going to, um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how she goes. I'm, gonna, I'm trying to figure out what vessel I want to put in there. Um, usually when I start, uh, let's say just have like a, I well, no, just in general, I'll put them in some type of orchid pot or some type of hydro pot. Typically I like the orchid pots because it's clear and I can actually look at them. But I, I usually put them in an orchid pot until, that, until I really see that they've established themselves. And then whatever, whenever the next uh, repotting cycle would be after I feel comfortable with that they're, they're thriving, I'll do, do it then. So if that's in the spring or it's in the fall or whatever, I'll do that. So this is the Palo de Flora. She's really nice, nice size. Uh, and the one that I already have, I can tell you this. Oh man, this is... Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna have to be very gentle with how this, because this seems like this is, it can easily break, which scares me. But we'll make it happen, guys. We'll make it happen. We're, we're gonna do what we do. Uh, and make sure this bad boy survives and thrives. So this is the palette of floral. And very implied palette of floral. Okay, so the last one for the day is, I will, uh, I'm not going to say, just tell you what it is first. I'm going to need to open it up and then I'll tell you. Uh, last one for me. So this is actually another duplicate. I got, I already, I have one. She's actually doing okay. She actually hit a, a little struggle. So we're going to see what happens. I'm not sure. She just uh, took a little bit of a downturn. When it, with the humidity adjustment, even even though she was in a contained environment, but took a little downturn, so I'm, I'm kind of putting her in like a, uh, I wouldn't say critical care, but but anyway, if she don't make it, I got another one. Okay, all right, so this is the last one. And then after we do this, we're gonna take you guys over to the sink and just explain that process and get these bad boys soaked up. All right, so this is the Anthurium Primalix. Ah, there we go. Okay, this is, must be the new one. And it may not make it because <laughs> it's looking a little pale, but we'll see. Um, Primalix. Give you an idea of what it looks like. 
really nice. They get they're like a lot of them. They get they get kind of big. I think about three feet, maybe four. But well, say three between three and five. I uh, still say that. And it's like it's another velvet leaf, but it's not, eh, kind of velvety. But really nice. Um, root system. It's not great as as good as the other ones, but it's workable. So we'll see what happens. All right, so that is my unboxing, guys. So next up, next up is to go in uh, the kitchen and uh, begin to soak them. What I like to do is I soak them in a uh, in a, uh, a combination of insecticidal soap, a uh, Castile soap with peppermint, and then a little hydro hydro hydro, hydro peroxide. Uh, let's soak them for about like 20 minutes and then then we'll put them in a, in a in the glass container so I'm going to show you that part next all right guys so what we're going to do what I'm doing now is I'm actually going to soak these for about 20 to 20 20 about 20 to 30 minutes basically about 25 um, and that's basically to if they have any bugs that may have may have uh may have hide may have uh what is it what's the word I'm looking for? Uh hitchhiked. That's the word I'm looking for. Hitchhiked between uh Equ between Ecuador and Florida or Florida to um Florida to uh, to Miles. I at least have an opportunity to get rid of them, hopefully. So this is just, you just kind of soak them for a little bit. Also helps with the hydration process because obviously it's being soaked in water for a little bit. So we do this first, and then so let them soak for a little bit. And we're gonna do this first, and then we will uh, put them let them sit in water for about 24 hours. So yeah, um, gonna pot these. I'm gonna put put these soak and the insecticidal soap slash. Uh, Castile, pepper, Castile oil, specifically peppermint, because peppermint is a uh, is an insect 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 deterrent, at least um, from some uh, from an organic standpoint. And then after that, we will uh, we will pop them up. All right, guys. So we are in day two. Uh, we have had them sitting in in a vessels of water for the last overnight. So basically, it's almost like about six, 12 to 16 hours since we put, uh, put them in the, uh, in the uh, containers of water. So they've been uh, acclimating there. And uh, in a few hours, we're going to go ahead and start potting them up. You can see right here, this one again started leaving. It started yellowing. So obviously, at some point, it's not going to make it. But that's okay. It's still green enough that I'll probably keep it so that the nutrients, uh, so if there are any nutrients that the, the plant can take from it as it goes through its acclimation process, they'll take it. All right, so on to the next step, guys. Hey fam, all right. So we are actually in, on Sunday, it's supposed to Saturday evening. Um, had to get some Paralyte, so that they add weight to the stores open so I can get some more. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and pop, pop these up and go ahead and spray them down with some neem oil and some other stuff. And then, and, 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 and put them in an acclimation tent for about a couple weeks. Now, I mean, typically they say about two to three weeks, but you know, we take it as it comes. Some of these won't be able to get because our, our tool size, I probably won't be able to fit, it, fit them into the space that I have. Uh, so we'll probably put them next to a humidity um, some type of humidifier or something like that. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and get started. All right, guys. So some of you guys asked me about my potting mix and what I use. And I said I would basically break it down in my next video. So here we go. Um, my base typically is a cocoa choir chip. We we'll get it from Amazon. Or you can also get the thing I've seen it at pet stores uh, under like um, reptile bedding. Uh, the main thing you want to make sure is that it was uh, how it was processed. Uh, you don't want it to have uh, a lot of a lot of sodium, and, uh, and that's and so you want to look for a mix that cocoa wire that was uh, processed 
using little to no sodium, and obviously that's for the for the uh, health and uh, health of your plant and its roots. So I do that. Usually that's about uh, about say about well in total it would be about fifty percent. I'm actually just mixing in the the mix that I had left from all but normally that's about forty to fifty percent of your base. Uh, you can also mix it up, in which which is what I do. I use uh, Coco Choir, the uh, just like the fi- more fibrous kind. I use that uh, as part of it. So I would do like thirty percent of of the mix would be uh, Coco Choir uh, chips, and the other twenty to, uh, to ten to twenty percent would be uh, the fibrous Coco Choir. So we mix that up. And you want to make sure you get it real deep inside. Just make sure it's uh, thoroughly mixed. And what you'll have is, well, Cocoa Choir is basically, uh, you can actually, I mean, you can use Cocoa Choir. I've also used sphagnum moss in the, fa- uh, in the past, or peat moss in the past, the kind that you use from, uh, the kind you get from uh, like a Home Depot or a Lowe's. And that, I think it's in a big green and, and white bag. That's cool too. It's definitely, you know, there's some uh, sustainability cha- challenges that you have with that. So, uh, in terms of being eco-friendly, sustainability-friendly, uh, cocoa wire is a better better option. But you know, you obviously you hear what you can where you can. But usually, it's either cocoa wire or sphagnum peat moss base. Sphagnum peat moss also uh, retains moisture a lot more so I wouldn't use it on plants that are prone to root rot because they will rot um, and that's not good so after that the next thing we'll do is I want to get rid of the ones I have up top first uh, I'll put in about 5% uh, worm castings uh, you, I got this from Home Depot but you can get it from anywhere uh, this is a little less than 5%, but this is basically just a, a organic fertilizer to kind of help it along. Sometimes, uh, and especially if you don't do a lot, depending on what time of the year you actually uh, repot and decide to fertilize. Some people don't like fertilizing in the winter, which is perfectly understandable. So this will kind of help get, provide some nutrients to this mix from what I've seen. So. In addition to that, I also use um, vermiculite. So you see that, and um, vermiculite is is another growing medium. Sometimes some people use vermiculite on its own, specifically to for seedlings to grow seedlings. Um, It is does add some. uh, It does retain moisture, so that's actually one of the good qualities about it. It allows you to make sure that, uh, again, the biggest thing you want to do is, for, especially for those plants like it, like anthuriums that do like moisture, uh, like to be moist but not wet, you definitely want to amp up the medium uh, for doing that. And in addition to it, because of the fact that it's kind of like pebbly chips, or what have you, you can, um, it also helps in the area the uh, aeration so we're going to mix this down as best we can I decided I do my I do my mixes in batches so they'll be ready when I get ready to do it because you never know when you, when you either need to do a, a repot for whatever reason or uh, or you buy something you find something new you find a new product find a new one and you want to repot it or you get an import in and you need to do that so this is typically again around 10 to 15 percent of the mix don't have to go probably like closer to 10 don't have to go to uh do too much with it we're just trying to get it nice mix it up So that's 
the moon will make the light. All right, so now we want to do some charcoal, horticultural charcoal. Some people say it's great. Some people fear by it. Some people don't. Uh, essentially, horticultural charcoal is meant to absorb, specifically to absorb odors. They also say it helps to uh, retain nutrients for uh, nutrients, and uh, that can be delivered to the the uh, plant later. Uh, like say, if you put, if you water it or you fertilize it, say uh, a month ago, it may the uh, char horticultural charcoal may keep it and retain it, but mainly it's used to. I get to reduce odors and stuff like that from what I've read. Uh, this is an optional one, so not necessarily, definitely, I, well, bottom line, the, the side, but the two things that, the two main ingredients that you need when you're, when you're putting up a mix is gonna be your base, which for me is cocoa choir, it can be sphagnum moss or some other things, and an aggregate like perlite. And you can use perlite, um, use perlite, um, some people use pumice, and I've used that before. Uh, obviously vermiculite is another one. And um, lava, I said, if, if I didn't say lava rock, lava rock is another optional one. So that's it. So we're gonna use, if it's perlite. Now perlite, you probably want to use about, let me see if I can get a mask on. Okay, so I don't have a mask right now. I thought I, I thought I put one to the side for this, but I did not. So typically people do it different ways. Um, I typically just put, uh, mix it in or whatever, what have you. Um, some people rinse it out because obviously the uh, the fumes or the dust from, uh, I'm sorry, not the, some people rinse it out because the dust from perlite can, can get in your lungs. It can be toxic and you obviously don't want that. You don't want you don't want to die for your plants. Um, so I'm going to hold my breath and pour it in. Don't do this at home. <laughs> get get a mask. Um, put that to the side for right now and mix this in. Mix it in really nice. You can get use a bin. You can use a bucket. I, you know, obviously I have both. I've used both. Uh, but the main thing is that you want to make sure that perlite is uh, looks good. And, I'll, and again, I'll I'll uh, provide a list of the of the uh, ones that I have or what I use, and uh, as well as uh, percentages. Understand that the percentages are. It's kind of like cooking your favorite dish it's you you may use like a tablespoon of that or a teaspoon of that but typically if you cook something long enough you know uh, enough times you, you know what works for you you know what kind of uh ingredients how you want to blend it what have you what have you so you can I, I i typically eyeball the mix i don't i mean i know that the majority you know i basically look at it in portions of, of what i know i want to see or what i want to have and that's it. So, like with this, probably put a little bit more pumice in. Not pumice. A little bit more uh, uh, perlite in before uh, so I can finish this up. But it's looking good, guys. I mean, this is this is pretty much a mix I like. I like it where it's uh, and where it can get definitely get, add a little bit of moisture, but not too much. I don't want to. My fear is over watering because when I do water, sometimes I can be very heavy handed. So this helps me with main, making sure I don't, don't go overboard. Let me put a little bit more. And y'all got to see a little. Uh, as I said, so, you know, mainly it's going to be, uh, in order of uh, in order of percentages, you're going to basically use majority. It's going to be the uh, cocoa choir uh, husk or chips. The cocoa choir, the fibrous kind. Uh, again, you can you, you can get you can get that online at Amazon 
or even uh, had to go to a pet store to be cheaper than to sometimes. Um, but again, the main thing you want to be conscious of is salt and making sure that how it's processed. But the majority cocoa cloud wire and cocoa wire uh, husk, I mean cocoa wire uh, chips and cocoa wire, I think it's husk or whatever, they just say regular hot cocoa wire, but it's the real fibrous fine kind. I use that, to, I like to blend that together. After that, the next biggest, uh, next biggest ingredient is going to be, be your perlite. You want to get a lot of that, or you can use pumice. Some people use that. Pumice is a little bit more expensive where I am, so I typically use perlite. But I do so, and but it was also sometimes I'll throw in some pumice just to be, just to be, uh, just get them, just because I feel like it just be a little extra. Uh, pumice is typically good, better. Some people say pumice is better than perlite because of the fact that it allows. It, 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 whereas perlite will has light and it'll basically begin floating up, pumice stays in place, so you don't have to worry about it not uh, having that, not uh, not being as aerated as it needs to be. So that's that. And then the last thing we do, some people use orchid bark. Uh, some people use orchid bark, which is fine. A lot of people use orchid bark. I, on the other hand, use. Mini Nuggets Pine Bark, and I get it from Lowe's. It's like about $5 a bag. And this is, again, helps with the aeration and aggregation. And of course, it, as it breaks down, it adds more nutrients to your potting mix or whatever, whatever. I'll usually put about like 10, 10% of that. And again, I, I know I'm throwing out like percentages, but and, it's so, and it may not add up to 100. But it'll add up to 100 down, down in the, uh, in the, uh, in the, uh, in the description, and I also make sure that, uh, as I give you, if I can, if I can find links to it, I'll definitely find links to it. But basically, look, I like to use the pollen bark because it's economical, especially when you got a lot of plants or when you're potting up big plants. But this gives you a nice, really chunky, really pretty, in my opinion, mix. Uh, and it's like making a cake, guys. You know, you just, just grab and fold. It's kind of fun too. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm gonna add some more of the pine bark. Yeah, the thing I like about this pine bark is that yeah, it'll give you about you can two bags that last you almost a season, or at least two. At least a significant amount, uh, amount of your pottings. You don't want to do too much, but you want it to be enough where you see it. So that's why I say about 10% of your of your mix is going to be the pine bark. All right. Oops. Yeah. So there we have it, guys. This is my pot potting mix. So we're gonna move on to the next step, which is basically potting up the, uh, the plants. So you'll see this featured in there. Actually, um, yeah, you'll see this featured in there. Uh, but again, this is a quick way to, uh, a quick homemade potting mix of uh, cocoa wire and cocoa wire chips, um, uh, perlite, worm castings, uh, charcoal, and vermiculite. You can also add, again, optional, all, now, again, everything above the perlite and the cocoa choirs is optional um, in this mix. But you can also add like pumice and lava rock if you want to add a little bit more chunk to it. That also helps. And that's it's, it's oh, the, oh another thing I do is that when I usually these come in, this comes in a compressed brick. Oh, let me show you what it looks like. So you can see this is what it looks like once it's done. See my my gloves been ripped, but um, what I do when I give it, it comes in a compressed brick. So when I put when you use water to to expand it, so what I usually do is I use uh, I have a fertilizer mix on, on 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 the ready for when I water my plants. So I use fertilized water to uh, to uh, expand the uh, the 
the cocoa choir bricks uh, and the cocoa chip bricks, and that way fertilized water will be in it. That's not something you have to do. Regular water will be just fine. It's just something I like to do. But that's it, guys. So this is my uh, this is my honey mix for those of you who have asked for it. Uh, you can see it's really chunky. Definitely has a nice little vibe going on with it. And again, the fibrous, the bit, you know, if you need if something to be a little bit more, put a little bit more water, whatever, whatever you want to go more fibrous, use the more fibrous kind of uh, cocoa choir. But yeah, this is, this is, this, this is what I do. I uh, hope that this helps. All right, guys. All right. Sorry, guys, I forgot my microphone. So I'm now, uh, so I don't know if you heard, heard anything I was saying over the past 10 minutes. Uh, but essentially what I was just talking about was the, uh, uh, why I use mycorrhizal fungi, how I, how I got introduced to it. Essentially, uh, I started working on it when I started doing uh, a lot of work in my yard and found that it was good there. So when I saw that there was something that was used in the community, I obviously jumped on it and started using it. I definitely have uh, nothing but positive things to say about it. So what and also what I'm trying to do right now is work on trying to get these leaves supported. They they don't flop over or, or get damaged or what have you. So ah, the miracle of Velcro. All right. So this is the scramble call blushing. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this in here. That's one down. All right, so put this down here for right now. Uh, so next we have, this is, I believe it's the Luthery. Luthery. Uh, Luthery. Uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, it's a little, you see a little yellowing, but it's not too bad. Definitely see some advantageous roots kicking in. So we're gonna put some of these below uh for this one i don't know should i now we're going to put this one in a bigger pot um cool yeah so this is uh, i think i told you guys this is my second one uh the first one i had it for about a month and a half and it, it did well it did, did well initially while i had it in a uh grow tent and uh you know i was in the grow tent and actually did it fairly well uh no real problems what have you what have you uh, and uh it was growing it was thriving and then i actually took it out because i want to and then i think i mentioned this before i, I really don't want to use like uh as the i wanted to the, these plants to thrive in my natural environment i know that they can be acclimated I do have a uh, whole house humidifier. Didn't have one, but at that point, but uh, but I do now. But I want them to. I want them to thrive in in a, in a in more of the ambient environment that I have available to it versus putting in a grow tent because space. But that being said, um, I think when I took it out, I also realized that this was a. I'm trying to get it situated. I also realized that it was uh, that the that the mix, the airway mix that I put in was a little too dry for it, and um, so it was sopping up water like crazy. Um, I couldn't get the rhythm right, and eventually it just started declining significantly. <laughs> yeah, even next to a uh, even next to a humidifier, it was just not doing well, and um, and so you know, bottom line, it died. So. That's one good thing about this. And one thing about the hobby is that you live and you learn as you uh, experience new species and and, uh, and plants and geniuses and all that stuff. You look, you learn from your mistakes. So this time around, I'm, I'm making sure that this one has a lot more. I mean, it still has some chunk to it, but it's a lot more moisture retentive. Uh, definitely a lot more moisture retentive than what it was. Oh, forgot to do this. And forgot to do this, the, the other thing too. Got to my uh, mosquito bites. And I have them 
over there. So I'm sorry. <laughs> Give me another second. I gotta grab my mosquito bites. So I have not had coffee this morning, so my <laughs> my thought processes are a little slower than normal. But what I am going to do is I'm using uh, the mycorrhizal fungi. The uh, they're doing a household household insecticidal, you know, little, little uh, granules, and then the mosquito bites. So I didn't do it for this one. I'm going to put a little bit on top. Um, but going forward, what I will do is put them uh, in the in the uh, in the mix itself. And this is for those of you guys that don't know, this helps uh, minimize fungus gnats. I think uh, it works for about like about 60 to 80 days, something like that. Um, yeah, so this helps with that process, so you don't have to worry about. And it it, it really does work. I, I saw some other YouTubers she was talking about it. A lot of times people will use like a uh, um, a uh, mosquito dunk or mosquito bits tea. Uh, and they'll what they'll do is they'll get like some type of um, uh, net, some like some type of little pouch. You can get like a tea pouch or like if you guys are near a. Um, near a pet store uh, the the the, uh, the carbon medium that type of pouch will work and you just uh, and you just basically put it at the bottom of your uh, of your watering bucket I mean your, your, your watering can and um, and basically fill it up and then of course wait about wait a little bit so that they, so they can actually become tea and um, and just uh, and just put it and just put it in and just uh, water your plants with it and basically we're doing that every couple of weeks or whatever whatever will also help to get rid of them I like to just put it in the soil itself so that it can, so I don't have to worry about that because I'll, I'll forget and next thing you know it's like okay where are all these fungus gnats coming from um, so yeah all right so, so that's 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 I use that. So here we have it. The Luthery 2.0. Hopefully she will she will survive and do her thing. She's really nice. This one is like I was say, saying in the, the first part of the video, I'm like, I'm just amazed at how 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 well um how big some of these plants are. This is may I don't know, maybe it's a season or what I'm not sure what the what it is, but bottom line, I'm happy. So this is the Friedrich style, style, Friedrich style, um, or Frederick Stolly, what have you, uh, the one that couldn't really pronounce that well. This one, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna put this one in, in, in this one. Uh, is that, no, it's gonna be too small. Um, maybe, I don't wanna put something in, in it as something as tall. That's this other one, but yeah, this will work. Okay, so this one is uh, this is actually not that. I mean, this was uh, the free style is, is fairly reasonable in the price, I believe. Uh, I, I, I'm not, don't quote me on the price. I think it's, I know it's definitely much less than the uh, Luthery, and uh, I want to say it's in the like the twenty to forty dollar range at most, closer to the twenty dollar range. Uh, I don't really know how much uh, much about it in terms of uh, what it looks like as a mature specimen, but I just I just like the look of it. Man. It was uh, it was you know I, again I think I, just, I said earlier um, I've gotten into strappy leaf and theriums uh, over the past year, so I'm trying to uh, I've been I've been collecting. <laughs> it's something. Uh, the belt, they call strappy leaves, belt, belt leaf, or whatever. But there's just something about that make me go, yeah, that's 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 nice. Um, here we go. All right, so that's so yeah, this is going to look nice. I don't think I'm going to need a any support with this one. Yeah, I think we're good. So yeah, this is the. Uh, Frederick style, Stolly, whatever. Um, I'm assuming it was probably named after somebody, some 
somebody named Frederick, <laughs> or Friedrich, or you know, but that was their first name or last name. You know, because that's how a lot of these plants are are, are, uh, are come across their names, just like the Billetier is named uh, after the scientist that that found it. All right, all right. So this is the Frederick style. Three down, eight to go. Right. So. Okay. So this one is. And this is the one of the uh, Serenoid Velvets. Yeah, the smaller one. Definitely. Uh, checking the roots. So this one, yeah, this one's gone. Um, and it's fine, by the way. You know, if you have a couple of roots that don't make it, I mean, that's perfectly normal because of that. Again, you are, you are importing. You know, I try to preserve as many as possible. Uh, but that's everybody has their own style. Some people will actually just take the take it out, cut uh, cut them all out, and uh, and start from um, and start from scratch. Just reroot everything. Uh, so here you are. here's what the roots look like. As you can see, the plant itself is doing fairly well. I mean, it has a it has a little yellowing. Hopefully, it'll bounce back a little bit more. Don't have to worry about that. Uh, I just smelled something burning. I'm like, what is that? I was like, that's a horticultural of charcoal, buddy. So, all right. Um, let's see. All right. Um, here we go. And here we go. So let's see how I'm probably going to take some of this out. I can't even see that right now. And this one is this one's a big one. I love these roots, buddy. I, I love these roots. These uh, roots are really nice. Yeah. So, have you guys done any um, any winter uh, shopping, especially the ones you know, ones of you guys that are in colder climates? Uh, so, how how have they uh, how have your hauls been? <laughs> how they uh, how they've been acclimating? What have you? What have you? Have you focused on mostly like local buys or have you also done online shopping or imports? Let me know. All right, so this one is, I'll we'll put that right there so I can have a little bit more support. All right, how's this look guys? Looks good, I think it looks good. All right, so same process. I'm going to have to do a lot of sweeping because even, even though I got this little uh, planting mat up here, it's, it's definitely going all over the place. But this one, I want to make sure they have some roots high up, uh, higher up. So I want to make sure that we get that. I also want to make sure that you don't have a lot of air pockets. Uh, so as you do it, you know, do a little shaping. So yeah, this is it. It's a beauty, man. It, I love it. I love the way it looks. It's hopefully it's a lot. It, it, usually, uh, my my worst uh, velvets are the one, pretty much the work items. I mean that I was I was saying to myself like, oh yeah. Now I saw it online. People were saying, oh, you know, they had trouble. It's mostly dramatic or whatever. I was like, I'm going to make it happen. You know, I'm going. I'm, it's like challenge accepted, and I've been failing. Uh, generally speaking, I mean, it's, it, I mean, they're still alive, but it's like one of them has only got like half a leaf left. So we'll see. Uh, again, it, it takes about six to 12 months for a plant to really acclimate. So I can't really say it's a failure yet unless it's just dead. <laughs> but, uh, um, but they're still living. They're still doing something. So we're just going to keep that up. So this is the Serenoid Velvet one, number one. Uh, okay, so this is the prue that we had. Let's see which one I want to put it in. I don't think it will go in this one. Nope, I, absolutely not. <laughs> um, I think it would, should go in this one. I'm trying to make sure that I, you know, they like, you know, 
and airways in general like to be crowded, so I'm trying to kind of make sure I put them in pots that are not too much bigger than what they are, um, just to kind of give them some, some, uh, so they can feel a little bit more comfortable in terms of growing, and hopefully that'll stimulate uh, and allow them to grow a lot faster, or at least establish themselves faster. So, um, yes. Yeah. So I'm trying to trying to be. I'll make sure it's consistent with with whatever the whatever the root, root ball structure is. Okay, so we got that one. And this one is going to be a little bit more of a challenge. Okay, so this is okay. Yeah, and I say that because a lot of his roots are off to the side <laughs> versus say being at the closer to the bottom or what have what have you. So. I mean, roots are roots. You know, they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna grow where they grow. I'm trying to be extra careful with this one because it's uh so big, <laughs> and uh, I don't I want to make sure that it has uh, it's pressed down enough to have some stability, and uh, you know that all the roots are covered. But I'm gonna love the fact that the roots are so so nice. I mean, you know, again. I love, that's one thing I love about Anthony is that their, their root system is nice, thick, and fat, and just very impressive. Um, so there we go. All right, so it has a little fluorescent. All right, um, so this is it. All right, so this is the, I'm sorry, this was the uh, Anthurium uh, proof. This is the un unknown variety, uh, the hybrid or what have you, that came from Ecuador. So this one is, this big one, is the Belsenki. So uh, I don't think I, I told you guys I have one already. And I also mentioned that I, I try not to do duper group, but you know, that's a lie. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, if you like something, uh, if I like something enough, I'll definitely get another one. Or if it's if I like it and I know that it's not going to grow that fast, that's another reason for uh, for getting it, uh, for getting something that's a little bit more, uh, uh, well, not whether it's mature or not, getting something that giving another one because you know that it's going to take for three, four, or five years for you get it uh, for it to be to a point where you could probably well, it'll be another size of a one and maybe a year or two to propagate, but still. It can take a while to get it up to a certain size. So if you want a certain size, you gotta you gotta get another one. So another one I got. Yeah, I know the last last uh, my last video I talked about oh probably like two videos ago. I talked about vision boards and how I wanted to probably implement them or start using them in 2023. So I've started looking into it. Uh, actually, I mean, I, I, I mean, I started like uh, drafting out or brainstorming some things that I want to do, what have you, what have you. I like my, my thought process. Typically, I write something down. I'll write it down and do a little brainstorming first. And then from there, uh, put it like into a formal structure. So I'll, um, I'll wrap goals and objectives around it. My background, my undergrad is in business, so I have a tendency to be, uh, and I'm an I'm a organizer. I like to, I'm a planner, so typically uh, when it comes to things related to, uh, you know, just products or whatever, whatever, so I, uh, I like, uh, I, I, I basically will go through the whole process of looking at something and seeing uh, what I need to do to, okay, if this is the end objective, then what do, I, what do I need to do to get to that objective? What are the steps I need to take, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I go through that whole mental process and that helps me kind of formulate uh, what I want to do. And I like doing, I, I, I'm a planner, so I like planning. Uh, you know, I like to make sure that I'm one of those people that, you know, if we're going somewhere or what have you been, you need to, what, what time we're going, when we need to be there, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, ah, it's getting tight. I may need to make another batch. I think I have enough though, because these other ones are not that big. All right, so this is the, oh man, we got to do the, uh, 
Did I? I can't remember. Did I do the uh, the um, skill bits? If not, I'm just gonna do a little bit more on the top. You know, you can put them. I mean, it's good. I put them at the bottom or in the middle, bottom slash middle. Some people will mix it in their uh, in their their soil mix. Others will um, others will just put it on top. And again, some people also just put it put it as a, uh, put it in the bottom of their watering can so that they can uh, every time they water, basically they they uh, would do it. But here's the thing: I got a lot of plants, <laughs> so if if I did it that way. <laughs> For me personally, unless I just had it in like a big jug that was like a, like a, most like one of those uh, picnic coolers where you put, uh, put, put, have the spot at the bottom. Uh, unless I had it that way, it would take me forever to water plants because it, it's, 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 uh, oh, yeah, got to put this on. It would take me forever to water plants because, uh, you know, I only got like I, I, the biggest can I got is two, two gallons and that could, I can, I can get through a lot of my smaller plants, but my big plants would be like, uh, I know you're not just going to give us like a, a quart or a gallon. You know, we need to be drenched. So, yeah, that being said, I have to, I, I have to do it this way. This, uh, this is probably the best way. The best route for me is just go ahead and put it in the soil itself. And I mean, you know, for subsequent applications, you know, the one for the ones that I've only just put, you know, I've put throughout the soil. I'll just, you know, you just put it on top. Again, it's, I mean, the basic, the basic premise is that it's activated by water. So when you water it, it basically will put it, put out a dose and kill the larvae of any fungus snacks you may have, which is awesome because I had them last year. And I didn't think about it. I had them last year. Next thing you know, I'm like, Jesus, where are all these gnats coming back? They were just annoying. So here you go. Here she is. Play, make it get her a little closer. Okay, I'm starting to get a little, still get a little brighter. I can tell that the sun is coming around the corner. Hopefully, uh, it won't get too bright before we finish up because then it'll be it won't be too dark. It'll be too light. Um, as far as like seeing. Um, Hopefully, I can get the rest of these in smaller containers. This one is probably not going to be. I may have to go ahead and just put this in a big one. I didn't want to, but it's going to be, I think it's too small for something like this. Yeah, it's too small for that. So that's too big. And then some of my bigger ones. Do I have any other ones? Give me a quick second. Let me see if I can find another. All right, I'm back. I wound up uh, getting some net pots. Yeah, I usually like the clear ones, but any port in a storm will do sometimes. So we're just gonna work with work with what we got. Uh, and net pots. And for those of you that haven't used them before, net pots are good too. It's just like a like the hydro hydroponic similar similar hydro type of pots or pot, hydro pots. Um, yeah, they're fine. Uh, they're just, again, different from the clear ones. But uh, the, the main, the basic premise and the main thing that you want to do is make sure that you have enough circulate, air circulation going throughout the pot and you know, to your plant and give them what they want, give them what they need. So, ooh, man, this is, yeah, this was tight too. <laughs> ah, okay. Maybe this one, you know what, I, I'm going to, I think I'm going to use this big one for this one because it's a lot of roots. <laughs> it's a lot of roots. <laughs> and I don't want to, uh, I don't want them to be, uh, to be too loose, but at the same time, I don't want them to be too crowded either. So I'm going to go ahead and use that one. This one is another Serenoid Velvet. velvet. Um, All right, so just kind of give you guys an idea. Sorry, it's already hit. I already started. Got the dirt from the uh, from from not my dirt, but my uh, planting medium, what have you. All right, so it looks good. It looks the roots look awesome. We're going to shake it down. I 
I'm gonna do a lot on this one. Let me just tell you, uh, it's a lot of roots. But yeah, so this is this is awesome. So let's see where we want to place it in here. Let's see one of the, one of the uh, one of the uh, leaves from yesterday is already starting to green up. I'm not green up, I'm green yellow up. So this is another one. I'm gonna go ahead and go with a two screw method just to make sure it's really secure. Um, yeah. It's all good. I'm actually, it's funny because I'm we're in the middle of winter. I'm already ready for a spring to happen. Although with spring for me, I get a lot of allergies. So there's that, but I just don't like cold weather. <laughs> I'm not a cold weather person. Uh, and it's funny because I grew up in the Midwest, so but there was a lot of cold, but, but I mean, that's why I'm, I went to school <laughs> further south and um, and moved to a, a climate that wasn't that was more moderate than cold, so to speak. And I live in the Mid Atlantic area, like Maryland, and we get we get um, we get snow like. I mean, serious snow, probably like every two to three years. Uh, I'm also trying to find, use the smaller bowls because of the fact that I am running low on on a mix. Give me a second. I am back. I had to figure out a way to stretch out what I got <laughs> until I can make some more uh, I can make some more um, make some more cocoa choir I basically use the compressed the, uh, the compressed uh, pocket so I have to water it and do some other stuff or whatever so I'm trying to make sure I can get this all done in one foul swoop so we don't have to go back but I, and I think I, I got enough I think I'm good um I want to do this now versus having to come back later simply because of lighting and everything else. Uh, as you guys know, different uh, parts of your house, you know, have received lights at different times of the day. So, and sometimes that's just not conducive to filming as I quickly found out. Um, so this is, uh, this is the other bit. Oh, let me, before I do that, let me, uh, where I put the scissors? Oh, there we go. All right. So, um, so this is this other Serenoid Velvet. I think this is the other one, the Agapasi or what? Agapasi. Agap no, the other one. <laughs> one of the three is a Serenoid Velvet. So, I'm going to go ahead and secure this. So, tape. We'll do the shit. With some tape. No. And here we go. She looks good, man. Looks really good. <laughs> got a couple of roots that look like they could be trying to pop out, but yeah, she looks great, man. That's awesome. All right, so we're gonna put her right in our face over here for the game, but we're gonna put her right here. Next step is let's do these two. This is the palette of four four. four. Power the floor for him. and I'm going to put her in like this one. So yeah, I'm gonna put her like this. Kind of let her rest a little bit so you have some because this is it's this uh the branch that it's on is pretty pretty um pretty delicate. So I don't want I don't want to put too much weight on these things can't get heavy until it can establish itself some more. This is the roots. Again looks great. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and put her, get her potted up. Uh, oh. Mosquito B. 
bitch. Put that in there. Let's see, this is deep enough. Yeah, so, uh, what was I talking about before? I was talking about the vision board, that's right. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm kind of excited about exploring that and seeing what it, uh, seeing what it, uh, seeing if it, it definitely helped with uh, some of my goals or whatever. Uh, used to do the, used to do the New Year's resolutions thing by the time, February, January, <laughs> the end of January, in the February, it was pretty much that was pretty much a wrap. Um, so this is to me is a little bit more structured. And I think the reason why is because the fact that it wasn't, uh, you know, it's kind of like okay, yeah, I want to do this, but it was no map to it. So for me personally, I needed I need a map to uh, before it was needed a map to say okay, this is where I'm, this is where I'm going, and this is how I'm getting there type of thing. Um, all right. So we don't want to put it up too far, but I also want to give it a little bit to rest on. Again, mainly because of the fact that it's, uh, it's a pretty, the stems are a little delicate. So let's see. Ah, uh, okay. All right. So we got that. So we're going to press this down as much as possible. And it'll settle, it'll settle down some more once I, once I water it. But we're going to, see, I really, we're <laughs> just kind of concerned about the delicateness of this. I do not want it to break. It is a beautiful plant. Look at the color on these, man. It's just really nice. Uh, really nice. Uh, yeah, she looks awesome. I'm looking forward to seeing her grow like this little sister. I mean, her big sister, because she's a little bit bigger than this one, but yeah, nice, very nice. Um, right, we'll just put her here for right now. And next one is this beautiful, 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 uh, can I use this one? I used to say, I really want to do it as small as possible. And I think this will work because I want them to establish while they establish themselves. I don't, you know, the longer, the bigger the pot, the more it takes them, the longer it takes them to the roots to establish. So I want to, I don't want to have it swimming in a pot if I don't have to. So I think this should be good enough. If not, I mean, it's definitely good enough for now. And if I need to repot, say in the spring or what have you, that's that's awesome. I can do, definitely do that. That's not an issue. But I'd rather do that than um, just think about the. You know what? It, yeah, let me put it in. Let me put it in a slightly bigger one because I I realize that I also want to make sure that it doesn't dry out too fast. And that smaller pot is definitely. With that, with that many roots, it's probably gonna dry out too fast. So, better be safe than sorry. Uh, get some more of this. Okay, here we go. Yep, that, that works. It's a little better. And we're going to Same concept. I'm gonna put this in here. Get these. You got where the place is skewer to give it the best support. Yep, there we go. That way. And then we're going to fill her up.
All right. There we go. Yeah. You put some more on this side. Okay. And a little velcro to secure it and again like I said you, you it's a judgment call on the velcro I just do it because of the fact that I want to while it's while it's feel, making its what get self comfortable in this new home that she can uh, that she doesn't uh flop over or whatever at least have something to kind of hold on to so here's the uh, crystallinum, crystallinum uh, bessier f hybrid she looks really good so i think this is the last one nope second to last got two more all right so we're going to put this out here You see, I'm trying to really try to use this bad boy. Uh, this actually may work. Uh, no, <laughs> let me just stick to what I know. <laughs> I'm not trying. Um, you know, I'm trying to stretch out this 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 uh, potting medium, so I want to make sure that it doesn't, uh, you know, that that is <laughs> that I I have enough. I, and I have enough. I do have enough. I'm just being like extra paranoid. Uh, So here you go. Yep, that works. And we're gonna use a skewer. And this one is perfect because it has a, it's a, a nice solid space right there. Great. And now we just gotta put in the medium, pot it up. And I just can't, I can't remember, and I'll probably see it when I edit or whatever. But I can't remember if I actually put the <laughs> billions on here. I think I did, but better be safe than sorry. <laughs> I don't actually, I don't think I did because I don't see it in here. So, all right, so now it's on, and we're going to put this in a little bit further and make it get on the base. And then, and now we're going to uh, pot it up for real this time. Too many, you know, I've got too many uh, wood uh, pine bark in here, so I don't want it to be too chunky. Again, with my anthuriums, I like for them to be, I've, I've learned that they like to be, to hold on to some, as mo more moisture than I actually originally thought that they did. I, was, I always knew that they needed to be moist, more moist, but my original airway mix was way too dry for them and they wound up, they, they wound, some of them are struggled. So I, I switched it up and made it a lot more, uh, put some more moisture retentive elements. As you guys remember this, uh, this other leaf, this is the newest leaf and it's about to die. <laughs> but you know, I'm just gonna keep it on here for right now, just so that it can, uh, I mean, maybe some of the other ones can use it. Um, I don't know, we'll, we'll, I'll, I'll make a judgment call on that. Um, yeah, it's a shame because, you, you know, it's a shame. You, you never like to see the, the, the new ones die like that. But it is what it is. So this is the, it's one of the serenoids. <laughs> so actually, I think that the other one was uh, Abacos, Ab the other one. And this is actually another set. This is the other serenoid. So this one. 
thinking it's going to probably go in a black container. Uh, one of the black containers, because this seems like it is definitely, this really, these roots, this roots are ridiculous. So yeah, no, it's not going to go in there. So we're going to, we're going to use, uh, and something told me, you know, you probably want to get some more, uh, more of the bigger ones. Uh, you know, whatever, whatever. Like I said, I probably prepped for the clothes. I do have these as backups. So, guess what? I'm backing up. <laughs> um, yeah, so here we go. Give me more stuff, one more stuff. All right, so I'm back. Sorry, I just wanted to put uh, some more wood chips in here, as well as uh, some of the other mediums I have. I got, I had to get an emergency bag of per perlite. But I have a, I have another one. I have another bag that's coming um, this afternoon. But I didn't want to wait till this afternoon to get everything to do it. So to do this, so here we go. Here we go. Uh, yeah, the same process. But uh. The fun, the mycorrhizal fungi. After I do this, I'm going to again put them. Uh, going to water. Them. I'm going to uh, spray them down with uh, with neem oil. I'm going to water them with some. Uh, get their first watering slash fertilizing. And uh, yeah, and then we're and then we're going to put them in a, like a uh, well, I can have like a little quick uh, temporary humidity tank uh, so that they can kind of acclimate over the next couple of weeks. All right, so we got it potted up. This is awesome. I'm probably going to, at some point, I'll probably take some uh, like gardening wire to kind of help hold these uh, these skewers up. Our next step is going to be to um, spray them down with neem oil, neem oil insecticidal soap, and uh, then water them. So yeah, and then after that, we'll put them in the uh, in the container, and that's. That's it. So I just want to thank you for taking the time to uh, join me as I did with this unboxing and, and going through the whole process of getting them prepped up, uh, the, the little post, post treatment, uh, post treatment to make sure there's no bugs or whatever is on them. And then uh, and of course, seeing them acclimate, uh, hydrating them with water, and then of course, pine them up. Um, we'll go ahead and ask us show a little B-roll after this of what they look like after that. But I think we're good on a, on each of these steps. But again, the next step is basically going to be to uh, put the spray with some neem oil slash insecticidal soap again, and then uh, and then and then a water slash fertilize them, and then put them in a little humidity chamber. So thanks again. Please feel free to like. Subscribe, share if you if you desire. I really do appreciate you guys uh, taking a moment out of your time to spend with me, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.